Welcome to this short webcast. My name is Steve Button and I'm a product manager for WebLogic Server. This webcast covers the use of WebLogic Server with the popular open source product Maven. With the recent release of WebLogic Server 1034, we have included a new feature that allows WebLogic Server and Maven to work more easily together. The WebLogic Maven plugin is a plugin that enables deployment operations to be conducted directly from Maven to a WebLogic Server domain. This enables apps to be deployed directly from a Maven environment, from the command line, from an IDE, or even part of a Hudson build job. To use the WebLogic Maven plugin, you first need to generate the plugin jar file from a WebLogic server installation. You then install it into a Maven repository, configure your project to use it, then execute the goals to enact deployment operations. The plugin has seven goals, which cover basic deployment operations such as deploy, redeploy, and undeploy. You can also start and stop an application, as well as querying the WebLogic server instance to see the list of currently deployed apps. To use the WebLogic Maven plugin within your project, a plugin entry is defined in the POM. The details of the target server are also specified to indicate where the plugin operations should be directed. With the plugin defined in the POM, the goals can now be executed. To deploy an application, you specify the plugin using its name, specify the goal to execute, and any additional parameters required to execute the goal. We expect that common users of the plugin will use various techniques to shorten the plugin name, favor convention over configuration for properties, and so forth. Here is an example of a shortened goal execution where using an optional installation step, the name of the plugin can be shortened to simply WebLogic. Similarly, using the configuration section, the required deployment parameters can be automatically set based on the settings from the project itself. This is a repeatable and simpler approach. In the next part of the webcast, I will demonstrate the plugin being used with an Eclipse-based Maven project using the M2 Eclipse plugin. We'll start off the demo by first creating a new Maven project using the project wizard. In this instance, we'll use the Maven web app archetype to generate the initial skeleton for the web application. Once the project generation has completed, we can use the Project Explorer in the IDE to view the project to see what was created from the archetype. Here we can see the project contains a simple JSP page and the relevant webinf web.xml file. Let's now open the POM in the POM editor and poke around a little. From here we can see the project coordinates, the dependencies the project has, and so forth. From the project in the Project Explorer, the project can now be built using the standard Maven install lifecycle. Which results here in a successful build. This has compiled, packaged and installed the WAR file into the local Maven repository for future use. Within my Eclipse window here, I have a pre-registered WebLogic server test domain. So directly from Eclipse now, I can actually start the WebLogic server domain and see the log messages in the console window here. We'll use this test domain as the target for our deployment and test, ap test operations. With the server started, we can now add the WebLogic Maven plugin to our project we do this using the Plugins tab of the POM editor. Clicking Add brings up a search dialog. Entering the name WebLogic shows me the available plugins. I select the version I wish to use, 
click OK and the details are then automatically added to my project file. To specify the configuration details for my target server, I now need to go directly and edit the pom.xml file. I'll look for the WebLogic Maven plugin entry and add the relevant configuration details. Note here the elements that are specified, such as admin URL, the user, and the password. I've also specified source and name values, which are derived directly from the Maven build properties themselves. Using project properties is a very common pattern to abstract away the actual settings out of the configuration elements themselves. With the plugin now defined, the WebLogic goals can be executed. To deploy the application that was previously built, the WebLogic deploy goal can be specified as a run target. This deploys the package war file to the specified WebLogic server instance inside my project descriptor. Here we can see the details on the console output of the deployment operation that was executed. The deployed application can now be tested, in this case using the web browser that is built directly into Eclipse. And here is my index page. As a next step, let's modify the application by adding a very simple servlet to it. The Eclipse wizards make it very easy to generate the working skeleton of a simple servlet. For this very simple example, our doGet method simply needs to return a very basic page, in this case with a simple title and a very simple page body. With a servlet now added to the project, the application can be built, packaged and redeployed in a single Maven invocation. We select Maven Build we specify the install goal, and in this case we'll specify the WebLogic redeploy goal to redeploy the application with the changes. With the redeployment complete, the servlet can now be tested from the same Eclipse browser window. If we now go ahead and take a look at the WebLogic server domain that's registered with Eclipse, we can see that it shows the application as being deployed. This same data is available to Maven by utilising the WebLogic list apps goal. Here we can see the same application deployed in the output from list apps. As a final step, what we'll do is we'll undeploy the application using the WebLogic undeploy goal. Once again, 
we execute Maven build, we specify WebLogic, in this case the goal is undeploy, which should undeploy the application from the target WebLogic server instance. And to prove the operation was successful, we go back into the WebLogic Server Properties page, click Refresh, and we should see the application has gone. And there it is. Well, that's it. Thanks very much. That's a quick example of the WebLogic Server Maven plugin in operation. Thanks for watching.